category. Decimals. <clears throat> when you think of decimals, you might think of a point, but the term is also used to talk about numbers that have that point, that decimal. Decimal numbers have a decimal. Notice that this decimal, if it moves this way, each time you hop over, you're multiplying by 10. Every time this decimal moves this direction, each of those jumps counts as a division by 10. We have terminating decimals. Terminating means that <clears throat> the number you see on this side, it stops, it doesn't go on, it terminates, it stops right here, it's 0.5. Notice this one, 0.6666, and these ellipses tell you that this goes on forever. So this is terminating, this is non-terminating, and the term that's usually used is, it's a repeating decimal. A non-terminating decimal is a repeating decimal. We, we could know ahead of time whether a fraction will be terminating. All you have to do is analyze its denominator. If you could make that denominator have only the prime numbers two and five, then it's terminating. For example, the one half, rewrite it. Is it terminating? It's terminating, you might say, well, where's the five? But you could write it, you could multiply times a form of one, a convenient form of one, so you could bring in the five. Just make sure that what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So now one half can be written as five over 10. And notice twos and fives were involved. So you expect this to be terminating. And it is, it's 0.5. This one, there's no number you could multiply the three times such that at the end, you only have twos and fives. So this one, if you were punch it into your calculator, would be a repeating decimal. Scientific notation is used to write very, very big numbers in a condensed form or very, very small numbers in a condensed form. And these are the rules. The number that's gonna go here should be a number between one and 10. Notice could, between one and 10, it could also equal one, but it has to be less than 10, the number that goes here. It has to be at times, if there's a plus, that's not scientific notation. It has to be at times. This has to be a 10. And the number up here has to be an integer. Remember an integer are the whole numbers and their opposites. So let's rewrite this number. Notice the decimal is right here. Let's rewrite it. This is standard form, the way you usually write. There's a decimal. But this number is not a number between one and 10. So all you have to do is move the decimal. So you move the decimal, one, two, three. Three times from left to right. The decimal point was moved from right, from right to left, three places. Remember that. So now, after moving the decimal three times, the number looks like this. Notice this is a number between one and 10. This is a times, this is a 10. And then this number, this one keeps the count of how many times you move. Do we move the decimal three times? Now, how do you know whether to put a positive or negative? Well, if you're going from right to left, right to left, the decimal's going that way, it's gonna be a negative. And if the decimal's going from the left to the right, then this power is gonna be positive. 